It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another top series where we're going to be looking through the top releasable nations in the new DLC uh, together for victory. Okay, so we've got a few bunch of African nations and South Central Africa. And we've also got a few around the world. But we'll start off with Africa to begin with. First of all, we're going to talk about Botswana. Okay, first of all, there's no silhouette for this guy. And we have a one state with 168 chromium. And we've also got a population of 234,000. So this population is less, even though it's a bigger nation, has less population than Luxembourg. So manpower problems are definitely going to be the case as Botswana. You get no factories to begin with as well. And also you get 168 chromium. Of all the resources, chromium is one of the weakest. Yeah, um, I don't really think anyone is actually going to want chromium. Uh, early or mid game late game maybe because late game you do potentially need it for making um, More modern tanks modern tanks is just seems to be the direction you want to go in most games anyway because modern tanks are the shit Yeah, you don't need them for heavy mechanized, but you do need them for either heavy super heavy tanks and modern tanks as well very very heavy on the chromium it becomes kind of a late game thing where like if 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 you get modern tanks early you do get like a really big edge but then you've got to control the words chromium and chromium is quite dense in like this area of africa i see south africa botswana and zimbabwe's got it which by the way these nations are released by the uk and also chromium island here and for the most part that's pretty much it there's bit, bits and pieces around the world there's a bit in india as well and here is the mother load, the Balkan areas, as well as Turkey, Greece. This area has tons of chromium. Yeah, as I said, there's quite a few little bits of it around the world as well. So you do use it mid-early game to make capital ships and mainly late game to use those modern heavy tanks and whatnot. Great, and that's Botswana. So it's gonna you get a pretty awful start, low population. You do got some lots of resources you could potentially export, but it won't be really help you until late game anyway. So it is pretty an uh, equally weak country to play as. Sadly, Botswana, sad face. Zimbabwe is the next one. Zimbabwe gets you 64 chromium, yet again equally useless. And Tungsten at 16, which is nice. You can make some artillery with it, and some nations do require it. But sadly, you're gonna be competing with Portugal with the absolutely shit tons of chromium so it's probably not gonna happen anyway you get no factories your population is actually pretty decent though 4.1 4 million but sadly it's all one state so you do have less land to expand on yeah so you've not got a lot of expanding possibilities and you've only got three infrastructure actually now I think about it Botswana only gets one so I guess Zimbabwe is a little bit on the up with that but sadly no no expansion opportunities relatively poor population and no factories so mr radisha aka zimbabwe is pretty weak oh you've also got a portrait as well joshua next is going to be angola which is a releasable from portugal uh, yet again one state again 3.2 million people two infrastructure no factories and no resources. So, in a worse situation than Botswana, uh, Zimbabwe, sadly. Um, no, I would still say you're in a better situation than Botswana because they've got the they've got less population. At the end of the day, if you've got no resources, you've got no places to expand. One thing you've got going for you is population, because with population, I feel like population is kind of the res raw resource in this game. If you've got pop, you've got everything. But anyway, that is Angola. Oh, and you've got the portrait, the generic portrait for Jonas. Anywho, next one is Zaire, which I think it might be called Zaire. I'm not actually sure. I've been pronouncing it Zaire. Anyway, this is a releasable from Belgium. Uh, they have got a tiniest amount of Tuxen, which is pretty much not going to make any difference to your game anyway. And yeah, here we go. So you do get um, absolutely shit tons of manpower. So they've got a good manpower base. They're a little mini China, mini Brazil of South Africa. You've got three states too, so you've got lots of opportunities to expand your factories. Well, actually, no. These ones don't have a lot of space. But imagine if you are going to get the technologies to expand your factory output. You will eventually be able to put factories in these states, so that will expand for you. Infrastructure is pretty bad. One, two, one, 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 two, three. Yep, yeah, all pretty bad. Uh, but you do start off with one factory, one civilian factory in 1936, so that's pretty nice. 
Uh, yeah, so population, as I was just saying before, is the kind of the raw resource of this game. I guess manpower's first, then steel, and then go from there, really. So Zare's got the opportunities to expand, but sadly, yet again, pretty weak because of no resources. And no factories is pretty equally bad, too. Kenya is very similar to Zaire, too. Uh, it has three states, one, two, three. Uh, population's roughly the same, three million, five million, three million. Uh, 171,000 K with the first conscription laws. They all start with volunteer only, I think. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, but as an added bonus, you have got some decent ports too. I never thought of that. Two port, two ports. This is a one port. So your ports are a little bit better. And you've got two of them. And also, you get a little bit of rubber too. So there you go. Not, not yet again, not a really crucial amount of resources to make any difference to the game. But hell, you can make some trucks. Why not? Yeah, so Kenny's pretty sweet too. Kenny's releasable from the UK and is read by Deedon. Deedon? 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 There you go. They're the new, new countries that are in releasable in Central South Africa region. Uh, just to give you a bit of a heads up as well, the reason why these nations have been included is to play with South Africa. South Africa's got a new focus tree, and there are some options uh, here to liberate Portuguese colonies, British colonies, and Belgium colonies. So the whole idea is that you spread communism by attacking these these colonies and releasing them as nations so they join your communist faction. That's the whole concept behind that. Um, yeah, so you're expanding communism, you're liberating these countries, and you, you're not actually integrating them. I think the way it works is if you... If you attack Angola or... Well, if you attack uh, Portugal or Britain and you take these states that an event fires to let you release them and make them as your puppet. So you're not losing the land. you technically still got them as a puppet so you can integrate them later in the game if you want to as well, which is pretty damn sweet. Very nice. Okay, there is a new nation in Europe too. The Republic of Belarus. Belarus is similar to Ukraine. It's got loads of states. So you have lots of opportunities to expand. Yep, the expansion opportunities are huge. And you've also got a relatively decent amount of population too. Each pop, each state is roughly about one, over one million or just less than one million. So manpower wise, you're going to do pretty good. And you've got lots of opportunities to expand to. You can attack into the Baltic countries. And uh, yeah, you start off really, 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 really relatively strong. You've got the, as I said, you've got the base, you've got the base, you've got the population, you've got the expansion opportunities, you've got absolutely shit tons of air bases too. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. But sadly, you start off with no resources, which is a bit of a pain. So it gives you an incentive to push into maybe Poland or the Baltic countries to take their steel off them. So it's, in a kind of way, it's a slightly weaker Ukraine, because Ukraine, I think Ukraine's a little bit bigger, but Ukraine gets loads of goodies. Yeah, but Belarus sadly does not does not okay there is a new nation in oh actually is there a portrait for this guy yeah it's the generic guy with the bow tie the dicky bow tie <laughs> all right pakistan is next pakistan is releasable from the british raj aka india Here it is, boys. It is a very scary black color. I don't know why the devs have chosen this color. We all love Pakistan, right? <laughs> so they get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states. They've got East Pakistan here as well. Um, they've all got relatively good population, particularly the ones closer to India. 13 million and 32 million. The ones... These two bordering Pak Afghanistan in the hills have not got as much. So population-wise and expansion-wise, they're insane. Uh, they don't get any resources, though, none at all. And I said they've got the expansion opportunities, too. These states are not applicable, though. The mountain ones don't get as much uh, expansion. But as you get the, the extra text, you'll be able to expand into those regions. So population-wise, awesome. Expansion-wise, pretty awesome. Resource-wise, horrendously bad. I guess location-wise, you're pretty good because you could attack Afghanistan or Iran or maybe even take on India. India versus Pakistan. God, that's edgy. That's edgy. Anywho, could have a have a nuclear war, right? Nuclear war, is that a good idea? Oh my God, guys, this episode is getting edgy. It has now been censored by YouTube. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, this is a final note, okay, because this isn't a releasable nation, but it is a new nation, so I thought I'd include it in there. This is a new nation for Together for Victory. So this nation wasn't in the 1.2 uh, 
patch and it wasn't in the original base game. It is Manchuku. Uh, I think you guys in the comments are probably going to get angry with the pronunciation or the fact that I've named it as Manchuku. I don't know. It's got lots of different names. I, I assume there's probably a loss of translation between Japanese, Chinese and whatnot. But anyway, this is what they've called it. Manchuku as well as Menchuku, which was in the old game. Um, just a bit of an extra little nugget of fact. The reason why they didn't include Manchuku in the base game is apparently they were having AI issues where the Japan AI would really struggle to maneuver their troops through Manchuku into China. So it would cause this situation where Japan would never take over China. So that's the reason, just to give you a heads up, why they didn't include it in the base game. But now they've fixed all that, so that's good news. And now you can play as a Manchuku, which has... Let's have a look. So it's got lots of states. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six. So lots of opportunities to expand. They all have awesome population. 11 million, 3 million, 5 million, 5 million. So yet again, awesome population. Uh, you've got uh, lots of... Any resources? Yeah, you've got lots of steel. Steel is the best resource to start out with because you need it to make raw materials such as guns. And you use it for most other... Well... Well, relatively, you use it pretty much for everything, don't you? Yeah, steel for artillery. You don't use it for planes. And you do use it for convoys and boats, too. So it is your kind of go-to raw resource. You start off with two factories, one military and one civilian. I forgot to talk about factories for Belarus, didn't I? Go over that really quickly. You do start off with four civilians. So you've got lots of production. A really great economy, but no military. Just to give you the heads up there. Just to shimmy back on myself. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest flaws, though, of Manchuku, I gave them a little playthrough to try them out. And because you're an integrated puppet of Japan, which is one step about, apart from being annexed by Japan, uh, you you basically give up all your raw resources. So let me cover over that. Integrated puppet, there you go. So extra trade to overlord. So all of your trade goes to your overlord. Uh, they get a trade bonus as well. And civilian industry to overlord. 25%, so you lose your industry to them as well, and military, and you lose technology sharing as well, so you pretty much get really, really cooked from the start of the game. Um, so the, the hardest part of Manchuku isn't expanding, it's break away from Japan, which is going to be horrendously difficult, and there's not really a cheesy way you can do it, it's not like you can justify on your master either, the game doesn't let you do that, so... You are in an awful spot. You may look like potentially you've got a lot to go in for you, but sadly you have not because Japan is your daddy. And you can't do anything about it. Finally, just as an additional note, these aren't releasable countries and these aren't new nations either, but I'll include them in there because they are from the base game from day one. Uh, independent as such. They are integrated puppets of British Malaya and the integrated puppet of the East... The, the Dutch East Undies. Undies? <laughs> the Dutch East Indies. <laughs> Damn, those Dutch Undies. Um, yeah, so the integrated puppets, uh, meaning that you're going to have the exact same problem as Manchuku. And as I said, you, these are included in the 1.2 patch. They're Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, but they're different and they're, they're released from the start of the game. So I just thought I'd give them a mention. Apart from that, guys, that is pretty much the end of the game. End of the game, end of the uh, video. If you've enjoyed it, remember to like and to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll be releasing some more of these top videos over the next few days. So if you enjoy it, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Also drop a comment below, guys. Tell me what country you'd like to play. Um, tell me in the comments and uh, we'll go from there. Apart from that, guys, have a good day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.